Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Today we're gonna to be working on this adorable file. It is a custom file by the Salty Yankee. She's amazing. Um, I sent her a photo of what, um, of the top that I have matching like this. I wanted jeans, I wanted Nike Airs. Um, this is the logo, one of the teddy bears from Together We Rise, so the foster advocate um, organization that I will be working with. So I'm just, this file is just absolutely adorable. Anyway, we are gonna be making her big. I'm thinking 30 inches, but we'll see. We're gonna size it out. Um, and I wanna do some fun things with this. I want to do the teddy bear um, kind of popping up from the image, so I'm probably gonna put foam tape behind it. I also wanna do the blue in like a flock HTV, so we've got like that little fuzzy feel on the, <laughs> um, you know, for the texture. So uh, let's see, so I wanna do that. Um, what else can we do? The shoes, I wanna customize the shoes a little bit, maybe add some personalization with HTV. So the shoe, we're gonna be experimenting as well. I have an idea of what I think will work, um, but the shoe, everything in white, I wanna do white HTV, so it's got like that leather texture. Um, more so than, you know, cardstock would give me. And um, I think that's it. Those are gonna be the special items that we're gonna do on this file. Um, if you don't follow me right now or subscribe, please do, I appreciate it. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> okay, let's give this a shot. Now, um, the long pieces that I think I'm gonna struggle with will be this arm. This arm looks really long and it looks really long even already at the diagonal, right? Um, I think everything else, like the jeans, like this is one piece, this is another piece, this is a piece right here. So I feel like the longest piece is probably this. Um, oh, you know what, maybe her shirt, we'll see. So let's make this 30 inches and see what we have. So I'm gonna go to height, change it to 30. And let's see, I'm gonna zoom out so that we don't have to scroll so much to see this image. And let's look at this arm. So this arm is good. It's seven and a half inches by nine inches. This arm, okay, so this arm, what I wanna do is I wanna go to contour. I wanna get rid of the, the top portion because I know the top portion is gonna be fine. So we're gonna get rid of that so that we can get a true measurement of this arm. Okay, so at 30 inches, this arm is 11.2 by nine inches. We're right there. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, we could probably make her a little bit bigger. Let's see, so that's 30 inches. Let's make her 33 inches and see what we have. So at 33 inches, let's look at this arm. Okay, I'm gonna, um, can I move it over? No, I can't. Let me ungroup this whole thing and let's see if this arm, let's see if we, Oops, I don't wanna make it bigger. Let me undo that for a second. Okay, um, I wanna rotate this arm a little bit. Let's see, 12.3 is up and down. So I wanna maybe go like this and then unlock it. Oops, I made it bigger. Okay, um, so 33 inches, I can cut this. It says 11.8. This is 10.5, so technically on the mat it will let me cut, right? But, um, you know, we can cut 12 inches technically on a 12 by 12, right? So this will fit on my mat and I can cut it. So I think 33 inches is going to be our max. So let's save this as Teenage Bell, 33 inches. So hopefully you can kind of understand how I go about sizing things. Let's make sure that everything else looks good. Um, so let's go back to contour though. 
actually no. What I want to do is let's duplicate this because if you remember the shoulder comes with it, right? So let's put back the shoulder. We want this piece. We don't want this piece. Okay, so now we have the full arm. This arm is good. These pieces should be good. Let's look at the yellow. Um, here's her shirt. Her shirt is, oh, uh, not that, let's see. Her shirt is a little long, but we can rotate this. And let's see. Why is it not giving me my new measurements? Okay, 11.8 by 10.4. So our shirt is good. I'm sure our pants are good as well, but let's make sure. So this is all, so these are little pieces. Oh, you know what, our, our pants will be fine. This is actually, uh, it looks like it's four pieces, so that should be good. So now once we have all of our, check that all of our pieces are good, then let's work on the details. So the bear, I kind of wanted to pop out, right? The black, the way the bear is right now, the black is part of the black background. So I'm just gonna do a quick offset and I'm gonna do a thin one. So this offset might not match the actual background, but because it's lifted up, I'm gonna be okay with that. I'm gonna make this 0.10 inches apply and that, so click apply and that's gonna be in black. So I'm gonna change that, oh, it is in black already. Now. Um, let's contour it though, because I want it, do I want it solid? Let me think about this. Um, I do want it solid, right? Hold on, let me think about this. I want, you know, I want the inside of the ears to have the fluff. So let me think about this. What do I want? <laughs> let's look at this again. Okay, so I'm gonna ungroup. Let's see, let's move that for now. So this is what it looks like. Um, okay, let's make a duplicate because for the ears, let me think about this, sorry. I'm thinking, thinking. Um, I think this is what I want to do. I want a solid background for everything to stick on. So this one, I'm going to go to contour and I'm going to hide all. That way my teddy bear is going to be, in this case, it's going to be in two pieces, right? Oh, what did I do? Contour, sorry. I want two solid pieces. So I do want, I did want to hide all, but I want to make sure I have these two pieces. So stick with me. I'm thinking out loud here. I'm thinking on the fly, so not always so good. This piece will be all black. It's gonna be where my black is gonna sit on top of that and my blue. This black, the reason why I want it to sit on top of this is I also want this to be in the turbo, in the flock black. So I want it to be fuzzy black because I want, what do I want what do I want <laughs> I want just the outline so actually what I want is I want I also want this to be solid stick with me I think I finally got it <laughs> so I'm gonna hide all but I want both pieces okay then I'm gonna grab these two and I'm gonna align it. I wanna make sure that I put it back in the right place. So align center, okay. Then I'm gonna slice it because this is where everything is going on top of, okay? So when I go to slice it, what will happen is, because the, the flock material that I wanna use, the flock HTV, it's like that velour kind of feeling. It's kind of thick. So I wanna slice it so that my black is going to be this. Wherever there's blue, it will 
the blue will sit and fall in and then the black will be the the flock as well so this way my the where the blue is it won't pop up extra it'll lay flat in there because the blue will sit and fit inside this frame okay that's what i want okay so i think i'm good this we can get rid of Whew, that was <laughs> thinking on the fly what i want that was that was ridiculous okay let's look at the hair <laughs> um the hair we can ungroup it looks like perfect so this little piece is by itself um this is all good okay the shoe so what do i want to do with the shoe let me think about this the shoe i think i'm good the shoe i'm just gonna have it cut out like this but you see how it's all in little pieces and i want to do this in htv i'm gonna try this is gonna be crazy i'm gonna cut i'm gonna apply htv right so let me see if this piece will be what dimensions are the 9.3 i need this to be smaller I might have to separate the shoe into two pieces because the sheets that I have, oh no, you know what? I'm good. Sorry, ignore everything that I just said. What I wanna do with the what, with the shoes, because it's in so many pieces, in my head, I think this is gonna work. I'm actually going to press the HTV, like a 12 by 12 piece of white HTV onto 12 by 12 white cardstock. And then, once those two pieces become one, because I press it together, I'm gonna send it to my Cricut to cut so that it will cut out all of these pieces. Now, how can I get it? Let me think about this. I'm still gonna have to put down all the pieces. I think I'm okay. I think that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I know we're experimenting so you know it's that's just what it is all right all these pieces these are all good all right here's our black background what is this what color is that I don't even know oh it's gray all right let me zoom in what are those pieces Oh, it's the stitching for the bear. Okay. These are tiny pieces, but that's okay. Well, so hopefully they'll make it. So that's the stitching for the bear. The only thing we have left is, let's see, what is this? This is, oh, we need to, because this is too big, but it's really not too big. It's just because it's grouped together. So let's uh, duplicate it and then we'll contour out the pieces. So let's contour the first one. We're gonna get rid of the right cuff. So here is my left cuff. All right, so my left cuff is by itself and then let's get rid of the left cuff on this one. Contouring is a great, great feature and tool. So I want you to get comfortable with it because I wasn't comfortable with it and I missed out on quite a bit. <laughs> okay, this little guy, let's, now with contour, we know this is in four pieces, so if we want to separate them into four separate pieces. We need four copies total of this image. So I'm gonna duplicate, that's image two, three, and four. Then each image we're gonna contour and remove the other three pieces. So. I'm gonna click hide all. It's gonna leave me this long piece right here. Perfect. So this little guy, four inches by 12 inches. And if I rotate it, I'll be able to fit it on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Contour. Now I'm gonna go off the left panel, okay? I'm gonna hide all. I want the second one. I don't want the first piece. So here's my second piece. Where are you? Right there. Click on this. Contour. Let's hide all. When I click hide all, it automatically leaves the first piece in this list. 
So I already have that piece, I don't have this piece. Now I'm gonna remove this piece. Because when you click hide all, it always defaults to one piece, otherwise the whole image would disappear. So now we're on our last piece. Let's go to contour, hide all. I want this piece, I don't want this piece, and now that's all done. Let's go check what else. So we've got this piece, because these two are connected. So let's duplicate and contour. Now you can also slice. I'm just, right now, I'm just on a kick to use contour. <laughs> so here's my left. Let's leave our right contour. We're gonna remove this foot or this leg and leave just this leg. Okay, I think all of our pieces are good except for our, black, our background. All right, so let's go to images. And this is where I have my grid of squares. Let's see if I can find it this time. On my last video, I couldn't actually search for it. It wasn't working. I'm gonna to go to ownership and I want just uploaded. So I have an SVG file for the grid of squares. And the reason is because um, it's helpful to have it. Okay, that's not working. Let me type in grid. Or you know what, I'm gonna type in three by three. Oh, there it is. So what's nice is once you have it as an SVG file, I would name it something so that you know what to find it as. So every time I need to slice something big, like an off the map project, I can just go and insert this by adding it to the canvas. I have it for free if you wanna subscribe um, to my mailing list. Uh, I've yet to send out my first mailing list, so it's not something that I'm gonna you know, uh, clog up your inbox, but um, just in case I do have something fantastic to share, I have your email. <laughs> if you don't wanna give me your email, you can also purchase it. It's on my website, theuselesscrafter.com. If you don't wanna give me your email and you don't wanna purchase it, you can watch one of my old videos where I show you how to make this grid of squares completely flush. Each square is flushed with each other, okay? All right, so first thing that you do, it comes in, it's grouped, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna go to your position feature and I'm just going to round this to the nearest whole number. So four and four, that puts it on a whole number. So if we need to make adjustments to this, it will be easier to do so knowing that we have that there. But let me clean up this back. Let me move all this stuff out of the way first. Oops. Oh, why won't it move over? Oh my gosh. Okay, let me see. There. I move this over as well. So it's just a clean palette. Let's go and put this back up here. We'll put it back up four and four, okay? So once you have it on a whole number, you can go and ungroup it. So now you have nine completely flush squares. I also have included in the SVG file is a four by four. So that gives you up to 44 inches that you can cut. So we have our black background here. You wanna arrange, send to the front so that we can see where things are gonna slice. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe move it a little bit. Oh, let's see. Let's see what we have. I want her head to be one piece, so that's very cool right there. Um, this little piece is gonna hang out by itself unless I drop it like this. So it's gonna cut off right there, which I think is okay. Um, did we ungroup this yet? Oh yeah, we did ungroup it, okay. So I think I can get rid of this. I'm gonna move this to the back for a second. Okay, I'm gonna move this and this. I hit control, I hit shift and I grab both of those squares and I'm gonna move it over so that fits, right? And then let's bring this back and see what we have. Arrange, send to the front. So most of her face will be one piece. This will be two pieces. And this little guy right there is sitting above there. So I don't want that. I'm gonna move this up 
just a little bit so that this cuts like this. So it's not such a small piece that I'm gonna regret later. <laughs> All right, so we have this, this, and this. Let's see if we can get rid of this square and do the same thing. So we're gonna grab this one. Let's move this to the back, arrange, send to the back. And we're gonna grab these two squares and move it over. Out. Oh, I'm not happy with this piece. And see how like I accidentally moved this like this? So because everything's on a whole number, I can easily make sure that this is flushed again. I'm gonna put it really close and then I just need to go and round to the nearest whole number. So this is gonna be nine, and this is gonna be 26. And now I know they're flushed again. So I'm gonna, you know, bring this back, arrange, send to the front, and I just realized something else. I wanna use 12 by 24 cardstock. <laughs> so hold up, I'm gonna move this out again. I'm gonna start over. I forgot I'm using bigger paper. Um, let me go back to images and hopefully it's still there. Is it funny that I forgot? Uh, let's see, uploaded and I want square. So if you end up using 11 by 24 cardstock, or I'm sorry, 12 by 24, I'm still gonna do this. And she is, she's 23 inches. So if I make her a little bit more narrow, in my head oh there because I can cut 11 and a half by 23 and a half right 11 and a half plus 11 and a half is 23 which means I can basically split her in half so that's good okay so I okay so a grid of squares can I make this work I kind of can't, so I'm gonna ungroup this. Uncharted territory here. I'm gonna grab these two squares. Hold on, actually, I'm just gonna show you how I would do it. Okay, so let's do this. Um, I'm gonna grab all these and get rid of them actually. All right, you ready to do some math? <laughs> Let's go and just start a brand new one. So I don't have a grid of squares for when you use 12 by 24 paper because we hardly ever do that. So I'm gonna change this. So we know we can cut, um, we gotta unlock it because we're making it a rectangle. Did it unlock? Oh, oh yeah, it's unlocked. Um, 11.5 by 23.5. Okay, so that's one square. I'm going to position it so that I know it's exactly where it is, okay? So I'm gonna round to the nearest whole number. 5.3 is gonna be five, 4.7 is gonna be five, then I'm gonna duplicate this guy. I'm gonna put it super close to this one and round to the nearest whole number. So 16.8 becomes 17, 5.25 becomes five. And why did that, oh, because we're at the half. So actually this needs to be 16.5. Okay, so we've got two squares totally, two rectangles totally flush with each other. And here's how we know. This one has the coordinates of five and five, right? So five, plus 11.5 is 
and it's at 16.5. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna grab these two because we know they're perfectly flush with each other. Control C, Control V. We have a pair of flushed squares and give me just one second. And let's put it right here. And give me just one second. And then we're going to make this five and 28.5. So now you can slice it up and we're done. All right, I will see you next time when this is all cut. Can't wait to see you. All right, see you in a bit, bye. <laughs>